What up guys? Today I'm going to be telling you all the best controller settings for Apex in Season 15. I used these settings to win the North American ALGS Pro League and I even had the third most kills out of everyone in North America. These settings are tried and tested against the sweatiest and most competitive players on the planet. Let's get into it. Alrighty, the age old question, what is better, linear or classic? Alright, so. Before I explain anything, I just wanted to give a, a general statement on the two sensitivities for people that aren't really like wanting to watch the whole video. And I will say, after tons of time using both linear and classic, and a few different you know numbers on those response curves, I can confidently say that 4-3 linear small dead zone is the easiest and most consistent sense to use in a game right now. If you're a new player, old player, you're trying to go pro, you're trying to play casual, it doesn't matter. This sense is so easy to use and is so good and consistent. I would recommend this to anybody. This this sense is right now I think is like the god sense. Now there are sensitivities close to it that are better for some people, but for like 99% of players or like 95% of players, I think 4-3 linear small dead zone is gonna be like the absolute god sense. Alright now for the details. Let's get into let's start let's start with classic. So classic classic is the most most common response curve. Um, I would say if you're gonna, if you're gonna play in classic, I would recommend using no dead zone. I, if you, if you have to use small dead zone, you probably should just get a new controller. Cause, um, if you're getting, if you're getting bad stick drift on no dead zone, then your controller is like really bad. So I would definitely recommend no dead zone in classic. And, uh, also the, the pros, the pros of classic compared to linear is, uh, classic is easier to use for like, like pre slow shooting precision weapons. Like the 30-30 wingman, it's really good to like line up, like super precise shots. Like I, I can center my aim on the middle of this target, like perfectly, like really quickly. Whereas in linear, that'd be a bit hard to do because it's hard to make these super precise adjustments on classic. But another thing uh, that classic allows you to do, because like the inner the inner range of the thumbstick on classic allows for so much range of motion. Like it's basically super, it's super slow moving at the start, so you can make really precise adjustments. So you can, you can kind of go crazy with the recoil control. I haven't used classic in a while, so my file line recoil is kind of bad, but... You can essentially control every single bullet on classic. Whereas on linear, linear is too sensitive. You can't control like bullet by bullet. You can't really like jitter aim on linear. But or linear is kind of just like smooth, smooth movements. But like classic basically has, is way more precise than linear. Now the trade-off is when you're tracking somebody left and right, it is much harder to control the recoil while you're tracking left and right. And that's because on classic, you have way less margin of error at like the medium input range of your thumbstick compared to linear, where you have way more margin of error. So on linear, on linear, all you have to do to control your recoil is just move your thumbstick down in a straight line. Whereas on classic, you're kinda, you kind of have to account for like every individual bullet like it's, it's basically a lot more precise like it, it almost has a it has a higher skill gap for controlling recoil classic does but it's still it's still way harder to track people while they're moving on classic compared to linear and uh i'd say that's the big that's the, probably the worst thing about classic is like it's really hard to track people while they're moving and controlling recoil well at the same time it's, it's just it, it's there's just not like it's not like quick enough you have to like really think about where the bullets are going and you have to be really, really good with the recoil patterns. Where in linear, I don't think you have to be that good with the recoil, recoil patterns. Another, another bad thing about classic is uh, on horizon, especially with like 2x on your guns, it's really hard to shoot people going up the lift. Like you basically, it's really, it's really hard to like basically like uh, track somebody while they're while they're moving going up the lift. Yeah, it's kind of like it, it's just hard. I don't know how to explain it. It's like. Uh, You have to move your thumbstick way further to actually track somebody while going up a horizon queue. Compared to linear, where you don't, you don't have to move it as much. So you have a lot more, like, free range of motion to shoot, like, track somebody while you're going up and down. It's like, right, right, right here, I can't, like, track this guy at all. I mean, I also have a 2x on my flat line, which makes it even harder. Like, even on, even on the 1x, I'm having to crank my thumbstick as down as hard as I can to shoot this guy. Whereas on linear, it's not a big of an issue. Alright, let's talk about, let's talk about the, the benefits of linear, which is what I currently play on and what I currently recommend though the pros the pros for linear recoil control is so simple on linear you don't actually have to like control the recoil pattern you just basically pull in a general direction so the volt goes up into the right you just pull down to the left and that's it it's that simple you just pull down to the left you don't have to like 
You don't have to like jitter your aim or your thumb back and forth at all. It's just like a smooth motion. It's really easy to control. Now you can't control it like ultra long distances. That's the trade-off. Like I'll never be able to imitate my long range classic flatline sprays on linear. Because linear, you just can't control like the very like uh, precise parts of the recoil pattern. You can only you can only like move it in general, like general directions. It's like I could never hit like an insane spray. As insane a spray on uh, linear than I would classic from this far away. Now you can still control the recoil decently well from this far away on linear, but just not as good as classic. But here's the thing: the thing about controller is like you're never gonna be shooting someone this far away, anyways. So it's kind of pointless to be able to like control it that well on classic. Now I'd rather have the trade-off to have a bit more margin of error at like the medium input speeds. So, like when somebody's close to you, like this, like someone's right in front of you with a two X, you're tracking up and down. It's way easier to do on linear. Because you don't have to like worry about the recoil as much. You basically just like pull in a general direction where the guy's going and slightly counteract with the recoil. So another thing is linear has actual no dead zone. Like if you put it on no dead zone, you're gonna get crazy stick drift. And that's because linear is actually no dead zone. Classic is not no dead zone. You put classic on no dead zone, and it it doesn't move at all. Because that's because uh it's not actually no dead zone. I don't know why it is that way, but it's just the way it is. That's why I recommend small dead zone linear over no dead zone. And another benefit of the dead zone being smaller on linear is it just feels more responsive. You can you can basically get you can get you can move your thumbstick to the speed where you're tracking somebody way faster. Like I basically I barely have to move my thumbstick for it to go to the left like this. Whereas on classic, I have to push my thumbstick a lot further, especially to change directions. On linear, it's like a small, slight movement. And on classic, you have to really jerk, jerk your uh, thumbstick around the track somebody. A lot smoother on linear. Another thing is, uh, it's easier to shoot players that are like tap strafing around, or just hitting, like hitting insane wall bounces or like movement on you. Because you can change directions faster on linear, and it's it's easier to control recoil as well. You don't have to think about recoil. You can move up and down a bit easier, I think, on linear. And even it's even easier to like shoot people while you're moving fast yourself. So if I'm like sliding towards a guy, it's really easy to account for the recoil on linear while you're moving at like quick speeds. Whereas on classic, it's a bit harder to do because it's you don't have as much margin of error at the medium input speeds. Because the thing about classic is like. Classic is good when you're just barely moving your thumbstick like this. Now linear is good when you're tracking somebody at like medium speed. Which is the most common gunfight speed, you know? When I'm strafing left and the guy's strafing right or something. Whereas classic is just really good for like super precise pinpoint shooting. It's just not what you run into in Apex that often. Yeah, overall, I would recommend 4-3 linear small dead zone over classic any day of the week. I think I think linear is just so much easier to use. Like controlling recoil is just way easier. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's just be better. It's just an overall better sense than a uh, 4-3 classic. Now, as far as 4-4 versus 4-3 goes, and even like 5-5 five five or like 3-3, three three, I've tried all those different sensitivities. Uh, way back when I played on console, so I've been, I've been I've been through like every sense pretty much, except for like steady, fine aim, and high velocity. Never tried those because I don't even, I don't even want to bother with those. But uh, I think I think four three is the most consistent because the thing about four four is going from three to four ADS, you never really need that extra input speed tracking somebody. It's so, like. 3, 3 ADS is fast enough to track somebody like when they're full sprinting. Like if a guy's sprinting across my sh screen here from left to right, I have enough input speed to track that guy fully. And the, the catch is, if they are moving too fast, let's say like they're right in front of your face, you just hit fire. And if they're in that sweet spot where you can't hit fire and you can't ADS, this is kind of where like uh, just playing a lot and having good practice comes in. You have to go in and out of ADS. So you're tracking and the guy slides up to something, you go out of ADS and then back into it. And this is especially useful with guns like the Scout. Scout with like a 2x4. Because a lot of times you're shooting at a guy right in front of you and you need to quickly like, see how slow it is to move from this target to the right target? Watch, shoot this guy, swing to the right where I can instantly go out and back in right here. 
way faster. <clears throat> and on 4-4, four, four, you just don't, you never need that extra input speed. Like, because you're, you're losing out on margin of error tracking somebody. Because you, you basically can only use the first half of your thumbstick 90% of the time. Like, it's it's so rare that you actually need the extra input speed of 4-4 four, four to track somebody. The only time you ever really use 4-4 four, four to track somebody up close, it's just like when you're when you're really close to somebody. It's like, but the thing is, you don't actually need the ADS when you're this close to somebody. You can hit fire. And so that's why you don't really need four ADS, you can use three. So if you're close, if you're close enough to somebody to the point where you can't track them with your ADS, like right here, I can I can't turn my ADS fast enough. You should just be hit firing. And if you're at that sweet spot, you have to go in and out, like this. <laughs> Other thing is, uh, for whatever reason, I guess I do kind of know what, what reason. The R301 is absolutely insane on linear for some reason. I don't know what it is, but the amount of downwards pull you need to control the R301 with a 2x is just like perfect for linear for some reason. It's like right, it's right in the middle of your thumbstick and you have so much margin of error and it's so snappy. Like essentially, like the instant you pull the trigger, you can be controlling the recoil like perfectly. Like you can like burst it like this with like minimal effort. Like the initial burst is so easy to control in linear compared to classic. On classic, I'd have to be like jerking my controller down. Like it is so much harder in my opinion. Like just try try doing burst burst shots. Like try controlling the initial bullet recoil on classic no dead zone and then linear small dead zone and just look at the difference. You have to pull your thumbstick down so much further. And there's so much recoil on the R301 that it's really hard to control like where it's going. It's, it's, it's just something about the R3. I think the R3 is just insane on linear for some reason. Now as far as uh like 5-5 five, five, go and like 3-3 three, three. Five five. I mean, the only reason you really ever use five five is one, you think it makes you feel more cracked out. It looks more cracked out because you can just quickly snap on people. Like if you're going like seven five or something, you can kind of just like, you look more like the MK movement players. Like if you're someone who like watches a lot of ACU or like fade, then you might be tempted to uh, crank your sense up. Even though they're on MK, you still might be tempted to like crank your sense up to the max. And guys, I'll say this is like mostly just for flash it's really not practical like you never need the input speed to be this fast like yeah you can turn around faster maybe it'll help you like run away from somebody and, and turn a corner slightly faster like this, this one like this is all this is helpful for you can turn corners faster like this but guys like i'm i play this game competitively and i can confidently say that you do not need sensitivity to be that high in this game if you're dying because your turn speed isn't fast enough then you're doing something wrong like your centering should be better, you should be pre-aiming people. You really don't, you don't need that high of a sense. However, I will say, 3-3 three, three is the ultimate cheese sense. Like, if you're trying to get your mom to play, or like, <laughs> trying to like get someone like, I don't know, like someone's like 40 years old in this game, put them on 3-3 three, three, and then you're gonna be beaming. 3-3 three, three is actually not that, not that bad, but if you're not 45 years old, I would, I would probably use 4-3 three over 3-3. Three, three. And anything under 3-3 three, three is just, a bit, a bit robotic. You, you really don't need this much margin of error to track somebody. It's kind of pointless. If someone runs, some, someone can just run circles around you on the sense. It is so slow. No, I would not recommend anything lower than three three. I think four three though is the best. Highly recommend four three. As far as per optic goes, um, I don't use per optic. I don't really know any pros that use per optic. There's gonna be a few, but the only reason I use per optic on controller is honestly if you want to use the craver like i have my six to ten x on five and that's mainly just for the craver like it's it's fun to uh actually no i have my per optic off because i don't i don't pick up the craver on my team i give my uh craver to case i'm reps uh, if you're a controller player and you like to use the craver i would turn these up 8x doesn't matter i would turn 6x and like this one up a little bit and you can kind of flick flick on people with the craver a bit better 
Well, other than that, yeah, I wouldn't worry about Perotic. Like, I, I don't even, I don't even turn it on because I don't use the Craver. Now, as far as LC goes, guys, I wouldn't recommend LC. I've tried LC for probably more than a few months overall. I've spent multiple months on LC, and I would, uh, would not recommend. I just think it's too inconsistent. Nobody's really found like a god tier LC sense yet. I know Jim Burton likes to use ALC, but his his sensitivity is just so hard to uh, it's so hard to use for the average player. I just wouldn't recommend it. Like for his sensitivity, you have to like one, you have to get lucky with your controller, and it can't have a lot of stick drift. And two, you have to grip your controller pretty dang hard to uh, control like his super fast sense. And other than his sense, there's really no other ALC sensitivities that have been proven to be that good. So I would not would not recommend playing with ALC. Unless you're somebody who has who can uh, spare like the practice time to try out a new sense, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't bother with it. I will say though that over the next year or two, my guess is that somebody will find some god tier ALC sensitivity and pros will start swapping over to ALC. But I think that'll take a lot of time because it is so hard to like fine tune a sensitivity on ALC. Uh, yeah, I think I think I think over time, my guess is that ALC will actually uh, surpass like. Classic and linear. All right, guys. The purpose. All right, guys. Let's go over my button layout. So the purpose. The purpose of your button layout should purely be to allow yourself to jump, crouch, swap weapons, and reload while aiming at the same time. So essentially, you don't want to have to take your right thumb off your right thumbstick while jumping or crouching or shooting or whatever. And so what my button layout allows you to do is uh, allows you to do all those things, jumping, crouching, sliding, while holding your right thumb on your right thumbstick. So you can aim and jump and shoot. I'll show you guys. So I do, I can uh, run around and B hop, whatever. And I don't, I don't play claw. And uh, I don't need paddles for this. I do, I do have a paddle for reloading. But I can B hop and jump around like this and shoot my gun on ADS while aiming my right thumbstick. Which you can't do if you don't play claw or you don't use my custom button layout. So, the button layout is, if you don't have paddles and you don't play claw, the best button layout would be this one right here. You can jump with your right thumbstick. So you can aim while you're jumping. So it's a bit, it takes a bit while to get used to, but you can get used to it. And I, I've gotten used to it, that's what I use. Crouch with left trigger. And you might be wondering why why is that left trigger and not left bumper, but I'll explain why. I'll explain why in a bit. Cycle weapon with left thumbstick. Now you do have to have auto sprint turned on, but the reason why is because auto sprint frees up a button. So because I have auto sprint on, I can assign another another button to my left thumbstick. So I just assign cycle cycle weapon to it, which is really convenient. So I can cycle weapons with my left thumbstick super easily while I'm looking around, doing whatever. ADS, left bumper, attack right bumper. So I ADS and shoot with bumpers instead of triggers. And the reason why is because bumpers and triggers, or bumpers, bumpers are faster and more responsive than triggers. Triggers, you have to press them all the way down and to like spam your trigger, you kind of have to like apply the right amount of pressure. Whereas with bumpers, you can basically push as much pressure as you want. It'll only go down a certain amount and you can just, you can basically like have a way faster trigger finger and you can be a bit more responsive shooting and like letting go of your bumpers with bumpers for aim and shoot so that's why i have bumpers and triggers swap now you don't have to do that if you're like you just don't want to care to learn it like, it probably take you like a day or two to get used to it but i think it definitely is an advantage and if you don't have trigger stops i would definitely recommend shooting with bumpers and my tactical abilities on rt you can use your ability while aiming uh, i ping with a which is the reason I have ping on A instead of RT is because I don't use, I don't think it's as important to have your ping uh, in like a critical button compared to your tactical. Like I'm not pinging as much as I'm using my ability in like life threatening situations. I'll just with Y. Uh, I just put that on Y because that's a button that I never use and I don't really use toggle zoom that often. And then melee, it's on. Now, I actually don't, I don't melee that often in this game, so if you're somebody who doesn't play paddles and doesn't play claw, 
you're just gonna have to take the L on reloading and melee. So whenever you're just gonna have to like whenever you reload, you can't look around while you're reloading. You're gonna you're just gonna have to like take the L. Same with melee. You can't punch while you're looking at somebody. Unless you uh, put your gun away, of course. Then you can punch while you're looking at somebody. Now, if you are playing no paddles, but you do play claw, then you can just play a default button layout. Because you can just press, you can press all these four buttons here with your claw grip. So you can just play default, or you can customize it, whatever. But you can, yeah, you can just play, you can pretty much play any button layout if you're on claw. Now, if you do use paddles, which is what I use, I have two paddles. I use this button layout right here. This is this is the exact same as my uh, no paddles, no no claw button layout. But I have reload and uh, ping assigned to my paddles. So reload is assigned to my left paddle, which happens to be B, so I made it B. And ping is my right paddle, which is A. So I can spam spam ping on somebody while I'm moving around my right thumbstick. I can also reload while moving my right thumbstick. I can interact and loot really quick. Get to my left paddle. But yeah, I think I do think paddles are better than claw. If you have to choose, but paddles are obviously way more expensive to get a controller with paddles on them. There's actually cheap. There's actually cheap paddle controllers you can get nowadays, but I definitely recommend paddles over claw because claw kind of like ruins your hands, makes your hands a bit. Yeah, it kind of cramps up your hands a bit. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it. You might get some hand pain if you use claw. Right, for the rest of the button layout stuff, I use default stick loadout or de default stick layout. Have to use and reload. Use that. It's, it's a bit faster than holding. I hold to crouch. Now I think this is preference. It depends on your button layout and how you hold a controller. It's like my teammate, my teammate Imperial Hal, uses toggle crouch. I think that's probably to do with the fact that he plays claw, so it's hard for him to like hold down the crouch button while he's aiming and shooting. This is preference, though. Use whatever you like more. I personally think it's easier to like spam crouch on hold. Aim button definitely would recommend hold. I wouldn't use toggle here. There's really no point. Rebel slot button on. Definitely need that. Trigger dead zones. Put that on no dead zones. You don't. You don't. There's no reason to have it be or add any delay to your shooting. Menu cursor speed. Uh, I'd say it's mostly preference. I would start slow, and once you get good at looting and armor swapping, then you can go up a little bit. But I'd be careful going up too far. I would just try and like keep it at a lower lower end. Because it's all about consistency. You don't. You never want to mess up an armor swap. It's all about making sure you get it, even if it's a bit slower than <laughs> others. All right, for gameplay settings, these are all pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, interact prop style, I use compact. Doesn't matter, you can use whatever. Button heads, I have them off. Doesn't matter, you can use whatever. Now this, I prefer X with shield icon, because uh, I think it just, gives you, it just gives you more feedback, and the feedback is just easier to like process in your head when you shoot somebody. It's easier to like call people out, in my opinion. Honestly, it's probably preference, but I just prefer this. Damage numbers, I would definitely recommend stacking. Floating covers up your screen too much. And you definitely don't want to have it off because you don't want to know how much damage you've dealt. Ping opacity, I would recommend faded because you can... Uh, doesn't like block your screen as much. Obituaries, doesn't matter. Preference. Minimap rotation, this is preference. Um, weapon auto cycle and empty. I'd recommend this to be off because I don't... Think you want the game to be making like doing actions for you you want, you want to be complete control it's like when i run when i when my gun's out of ammo i know it's out of ammo and i know to swap i don't want my game to do it for me because it's going to like start swapping my gun when i don't want it to auto sprint this is this is really important i recommend having auto sprint on because it frees up that extra button slot uh, that i use for cycling my weapon so definitely recommend that having on and you can you can get used to like the fine movement it's like a lot of people don't like using it because it's hard to like control walking versus sprinting but it's just a skill gap thing. You'll get used to it. You'll be able to like walk with your gun out, be able to shoot without spraying after some time. Hold have sprint. Definitely have that off. Although it doesn't really matter since I'm on auto sprint. Jetpack control. I prefer hold. Um, I think hold's a bit better for like spamming your jetpack. Because when you're like spamming your jetpack like this, trying to like dodge bullets or whatever. You're, you only have to press your jetpack half as many times on hold compared to toggle, so I prefer hold. This I prefer 2D, 3D. It just makes the feedback a bit more clear. It's easier, easier to see. This, definitely turn that off. You want to be able to armor swap and not get shot out of the box when you're armor swapping, so definitely turn that off. This doesn't matter, preference. And all this other stuff, none of this really matters. This is all preference. Uh, reticle. 
reticle and laser sight. Honestly, this doesn't matter. I have a um, green reticle. Actually, I'm, I'm on a different PC. I might have I might have a red reticle on my, on my main PC. But honestly, it doesn't matter. You use whatever you use whatever you like for reticle and laser sight. I don't think it matters at all. Some people like to think that uh, certain colors are easier to see and like can easier to like track people with certain colors. But in my experience, I haven't noticed a difference. So I just usually use red or green, whatever you like. And all these other things in the bottom, it's all preference. <laughs> Alright, video settings are pretty pretty straightforward. I use max FOV. Honestly, anything above 90 is fine. I think it's just preference. Most, like 99% of pros use 110, but there are a few pros that use lower than 110, I believe. I used to play on 90 when I was on console, because I thought it would get more FPS, which I don't know if it actually did or not, but... Anything above 90 is fine. If you like playing on 90 or 100, it doesn't matter. I'll just make sure it's above 90. Could be ability scaling. Definitely turn that off. That, that's just gonna like disorient you more. There's no reason to have your screen changing FOV like mid ability. And sprint view shake, definitely turn that off because um, it just adds more screen clutter. Screen clutter. It makes things harder to see. And for the advanced settings, I pretty much have everything on very low because it gives me more FPS, which makes it Makes there less input lag and more FPS, which allows you to see people and like track people a bit easier. Video reflex I have on max because that, that actually gives you less input lag when it's on max instead of very low. <clears throat> All the stuff low, low, bilinear disabled. Actually, texture filtering. Uh, or no, texture stream budget. A lot of people ask me why I have this on none instead of like high or low or medium because this this is the thing that makes my game look like play-doh a lot of people ask why my textures are so bad like the side of my gun the ground everything everything looks like play-doh and actually i don't do that because it gives me more fps it really doesn't give you more fps i just think the play-doh textures make it easier to spot people and track people in game like when you're tracking somebody against a smooth background it is way easier to see like what their body is doing and it's way easier to like just spot people in general on smooth backgrounds compared to detailed backgrounds. So that's why I have that on very low, or a none. Everything else though is very low, and yeah, I would just recommend keeping everything on very low for max FPS. If you're someone who plays casually though, and you want to have a pretty game, then go for it. It's all, I mean, it's all about having a fun, fun experience. And if you think having pretty graphics makes the game more fun for you, then I would go for it. If you're competitive, I would definitely put it on very low. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you all can one-up your buddies with these settings, or even drop your first like 4K or 20 kill game. If you guys have any feedback on this video, please leave a comment below. I'd really appreciate it because I'm going to be making settings videos for every season from now on. See you in the next one.